Okay, my name's Heidi and this is Prada, my party coloured standard poodle. And today I'm going to be showing you some little techniques um, how to do a modern trim, which is quite a nice haircut for customers if they don't want something too short. They want something a bit longer and a little bit more style to it. Okay, so first thing we do is um, clip the face as a poodle face. Right, so on the face we've got um, a line from our eye to our ear, a nice straight line. We don't want to come up into the head, um, so we have a nice straight line along there. And then we're going to have a line coming from our ear, just below our Adam's apple. How low you go depends on really what haircut you're doing and the length of your dog's neck and chest. Um, so it's either going to um, lengthen the neck and the chest or shorten it, depending on how long or short your dog's neck and chest is. Um, so usually it comes just, we just stop just as we come under the Adam's apple and then we start to go down into the chest. So here we start at the most protruding point. Right, when we clip the dog's mouth, we need to make sure we pull the mouth back so that these flues here aren't in the way. And when you trim uh, around the mouth, always use the very edge of the trimmer like this so that we're not actually going to get these bits caught into the trimmer. And then we've also got to make sure that we really come right up to the edge of the mouth and get all those little hairs away so that when the dog actually is panting, we haven't got hairs sticking out all around the mouth. So we've got a really nice clean mouth, clean around the nose and a nice clean face. Okay. All right. uh, with the ear, um, when you clip the ear, hold the ear flat in your hand and trim, always have the trimmer coming off the ear all at one time. So all the way around, it has to come off the ear at one time. And if we fold the ear over, we can see that we've got a big ear flap here. So if we clip off the ear straight off like that, we're not going to cut the dog. But if we come from any angle, this way or that way, this little bit of skin is going to get caught in the clipper and you're going to have a cut ear. Same with the little fold at the top of the ear. Uh, this little ear, if you, this little part of the ear, if you don't have the trimmer coming off the ear at one part, you can get this little flap caught into the trimmer and cut the dog's ear. So these are the two really high points of the ear that will get cut most of all. So these you have to watch out on. And these flaps, every single dog has them. So what we do is we put our, your fingers uh, in between the pads and then break the toes open with your fingers like this. And when we trim the um, foot, what we do is we start from the nail, work down the nail into the foot like this. And then we scoop between, just scoop between the toes like that. And that takes all the hair out from between the toes and around the webbing and around the nails. And then at the top of the foot, we actually want to first of all make a line around the foot where we're going to have our trimming line like this and the back as well underneath and I always come find my line come down first so that I know where I'm actually trimming to when I come uh, reversing on the hair that way I know that I'm not going to shave too far up the dog's leg because we only really want to have it just at the break of the wrist there. Um, if you've got how high or how low your legs go, um, generally if you have a dog that hasn't got a very pretty foot then you can leave the cuffs lower so they're resting on the knuckles here. But if you've got a dog that hasn't got a pretty foot then you can raise the cuffs and show them off. We also want to spread the toes apart with our fingers so that we can actually clip between the pads at the back. And she has um, a tipped tail um, but she doesn't have a pom on this tail so what we're doing is we're really creating more of a Kerry tail to give her a shorter back and give her more angulation at the back which is a really good style for dogs that have 
a very long back because it shortens them up a lot. Right, so one little trick I've learnt to put the cuffs in is to comb all the hair down. Pull all the hair down with your hand and then on a really nice short blade take all the excess hair off around the bottom of the cuff. And this actually gives you uh, a nice cuff at the bottom with minimal effort. And we can do that on all the legs all the way around. Stay good girl. This is a really good time saving technique, especially in the salon when time is short. Stay. Stay. Um, so I'm just uh, cleaning around her genital area, around her bottom and then taking the underneath side of her tail a little shorter there. Just to say that we're really ready for scissoring the coat. So she's been bathed and blasted dry and um, she hasn't been conditioned because um, we have a little conditioning spray in the bottle um, that we're going to use for um, scissoring. Stay. So it's quite important when you're doing poodles that really you've got the right equipment to do it. Um, so this this slicker brush that I've got has got much longer pins than a normal slicker brush um, so that it gets through the depth of coat. Uh, that way we can really brush through the coat and straighten it as much as possible. And also I'm going to be using two types of scissors, one straight scissor and one curved scissor. And really to make life easy for yourself, if you're doing a poodle, um, uh, use the straight scissors to do the straight bits and the curves to do the curved bits and it makes your life a lot easier. And uh, the other bit of equipment that I've got is a trimmer um, which I use to do the feet, face and tail and around the genital areas and the ears. So first thing I'm going to do is to the top line here. And we're looking for a straight top line. We'll take some of that hair off first. Now this um, dog's had puppies uh, about three months ago, so um, it's had a little effect on her coat. So she's lost a little bit of coat, and um, we see her body shape has changed a little as well. Right, so once I've put the top line in, now I can follow this round to um, her rear angulation. Now 
what I love about this haircut is putting shape, being able to really put shape, sculpture shape into the dog and to hide the dog's faults and make the good bits of the dog stick out on the show. Stay, stay. more nerve-wracking than doing a dog grooming competition, this. She hasn't got much hot hair at the back here, so we've got to be really careful about how we do the back end, and we can try to make her look like she has more hair at the back but we can't stick on what's not there. By bringing it round on the sides, we can create more angulation in the back of the leg. It's all about an optical illusion, really, making something appear more than it is. What I usually do is try and put actually shape in first and then finish afterwards. So what we want to do now is create a bit of a waist to the last rib of the dog. Underneath, we're going to create a bit of a waist as well on her. Just use, sorry, those trimmers. So. Tidy up underneath.
this comb is a poodle comb and basically it has really long teeth and um, quite sharp teeth at the end so it really picks up the coat really well um, and the comb is really important that your teeth are always the same distance apart and if they start falling out and breaking and pointing in all directions get rid of it, bin it and get yourself a new one. It's really important that you have a comb that can actually prepare the coat for you so it's ready for styling. So now I've put in the back and the side I can come and do some on the front. What we really want to create with poodles is an elegant look. So we want to have them as elegant as we can um, at the end of it and that is portrayed in this trim a lot. Um, that it really is quite a masculine trim but it does um, create elegance in the dog. Nice and short behind the ears and above the shoulder is going to create more of a, a swan neck on the dog and give it more neck and uh, make it look more um, elegant. <laughs> The poodles should be have well sprung ribs, so we definitely don't want to take those away. Even though they're not going to be really big, they're still going to be there. The legs at the front should be column legs. And hers aren't really long, so we haven't really got a lot to take off. Make sure the hole underneath between the front legs follows all the way through. And the good thing about this trim is it can be as subtle or as extreme as you want it to be. It's a nice uh, cut for customers' dogs if they want that something a little bit extra. I've swapped the curved scissors now to come around to make this a little more curved than straight. So what we need to do is really just try and get our shape that we want. And all the time I'm looking at the whole dog to look to try and balance the whole dog because I know that she doesn't have a lot of hot hair and so everything has to balance.
can see now it's uh, starting to take shape on it. Stay. Column legs should be sitting underneath the dog and not out to the front of it. the inside to the legs are straight. So I've shortened it a little bit at the top of her leg there. Nothing that you'd really notice, but basically it's just going to create a little bit more shape, illusion shape really, on her body and make her look like she has more than she is. I'm just uh, uh, trimming a little bit more behind her ear so her ear can sit nicely down and then we can really create more of a bit of a swan neck coming around into the dog. So now I'm just going to trim the line from her eye over her ear. This is quite a popular cut for some of our Poodle customers as well. So I'm just going to use my curves just to come around the side of the head there. We're going to imagine a swan neck coming down and it being elegant coming down into the body of the dog. It's really important to get this top line here really beautifully nicely curved and coming into the dog's body. Right, so when we look at the whole dog now, where, where she's missing hair is on her hock, uh, sorry, on her stifle here and also on the hock. 
And if you can imagine that if we actually built hair on here and on here, it's going to give a much more flair and angulation and much more style as well to fit in with all the rest of the dog. Uh, so that's really what I'd like to see what I've, we've, we've now got to grow on her. And if you notice, I didn't actually cut any hair off of here because I want this bit to grow. So I can go down and lightly tidy the hair. Look a little look. stay, 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 Potter. By taking hair out of here and here, we can make it look like it has a little bit more shape. So now once we've really got our shape in, then we can put a bit more finish on the dog. Oh, this is uh, a scissoring spritz spray. This holds the hair. Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm just playing really and um, making it a little bit, now I've got my basic shape, I go around and put a finish on, just tidying up and uh, making the angles uh, a little bit more pronounced. Just looking really to put a little bit more of an even finish on it. Which obviously is going to get the haircut to stay longer and um, especially for a pet dog, you know, the more you go over the haircut and um, uh, again and put it in again, uh, the longer it keeps for the six weeks or Actually, our poodles come in every three weeks, so <laughs> stay. She's got quite a soft coat and, uh, at the moment and uh, a little bit sparse because of the puppies as well, which is uh, not to be expected. And this is a little bit of thicker and thicker and if they, it's quite nice to put in there if uh, it holds the hair and uh, gives you a better canvas to scissor on. And obviously it does what it says in the tin, makes it look thicker as well.
And if you turn the head, dog's head to the side, we can still see it still looks a nice shape there. So if you turn your dog's head to the side and you've still got lots of hair or it's looking out of shape, then you know that you've still got to trim some more hair off. So move the dog around um, in, the way, in the natural way that it's going to move and even sit it down. Sit, sit brother, sit. Because even when the dog sits, we want this chest to be still running in between the legs underneath. So you don't want big bits of hair sticking out there. So that's a good way to make sure that that is in properly. Um, because any way that really your dog is sitting, your hair cut should still look nice and it should still look balanced and in the shape of the dog. So that's uh, one side of the poodle. Pop. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the other side, the same as I've done that side, and uh, then I need to make sure that both sides are the same and they're balanced, and I'll do that from looking from the back of the dog, the front of the dog, and on top of the dog as well. And that way we can make sure that we've got the right lengths on either side of the dog, because uh, that is one of the hardest things to do, is to make sure that both sides are the same. Uh, yeah, so when we're doing the head, uh, we need to look from the front really and make sure that both sides are even and also looking at the neck as well behind to see if both sides were coming down from the same part. Um, and so we can look at how the head is sitting. You see she hasn't got any hairspray in her head, just a little bit of thicker and thicker to Keep it up a little bit. Um, basically, when we come round, we're going to look at the whole of the top line. And now, now we've got the height of the head, we can come around and actually trim down the neck into the withers. Again, what I like to do is pull my dog's head to the side and make sure that all this still nicely blends in. So when the dog moves its head around, it's still all in shape. I'm looking at the front legs to see the outline shape is coming round the same and then coming round down into the column legs at the front. And same when I look at the back. I'm going to look at the back of the dog and see that my two sides, if they're not coming down the same, and I can tidy them up. But they should be coming down into parallel legs at the back as well. 
Oh, I need this table down. It's a bit high, isn't it? Okay. Look at your neck. Stay. Stay there. I can look from the back and see if both sides are the same or if one has a little bit more sticking it up. It's always important to stand away from the dog and come away a bit and actually have a look at the whole dog from a little bit further away because then you really do see the whole thing and what you're left with here. From, from over here, you know, I can see that she's got extra hair sitting out there and also I can take more out of uh, the uh, back of the top of her hock there. Stay, stay, stay. Stay. Stay that way. That just gives us a little bit more angulation there. Um, well, I've given more a Kerry tail because she's very long in the body and she's not very well angulated at her back end. So basically what this does is instead of her back starting here, it's starting down here. So it really brings it all forward because uh, the nice thing about poodle grooming is that it's all an optical illusion. You can um, make, make the dog look a lot better than what it really is if you were to just follow the dog itself. Um, so that's really what we're doing and this trim allows you to do that um, in, a, um, in a very subtle way or an extreme way because we can go much more extremer with this haircut, uh, building up more hair and having a lot more leg and hock hair. It's gonna be a lot more flashy for her and, um, and, and give her a lot more style as well. So uh, as you're trimming, at some point, you need to actually stand back a couple of feet away from the dog and look at the whole dog and make sure that the whole dog is balanced with each other. Um, so each part, uh, moves in with each other and the whole thing is balanced as well and uh, we're making the best out of the dog that we can. <laughs>